servant of the God, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house, burnt he with fire. Now, let us examine the basic differences between the two churches. One, when the temple built by King Solomon was dedicated to God, the king appealed to God to dwell inside it, and God agreed to make his presence felt in the temple. Yes. As we read in 1 Kings 8, 26-29, And now, O God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be very firm, which thou spoke unto thy servant David, my father. But with God indeed dwell on the earth. Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built. Yet, I have thy respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayed before thee today, that thine eyes may be open towards this house night and day, even towards the place of which thou hast said, My name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make towards this place. 2. In 1 Kings 9, God promised King Solomon to make his presence felt within the house which he had built for him, if he obeyed his commandment and not follow other gods. But Solomon forsook God, and God fulfilled his judgment, which led to the eventual destruction of the temple. Third, when God came in the flesh as Jesus Christ to the earth, he met the rebuilt temple in sin, as we read in John 2, 13-21. And the Jews Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and changers of money sitting, and when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold those, Take these things hence. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The sale of thy house had eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign? Show it thou unto us, see that thou doest these things. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty-six years was this temple in building, and without rear it up in three days, for he spake of the temple of his body. Amen. 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 When the Lord was on his last visit to Jerusalem, before the last Passover, he looked upon the city of Jerusalem and made this prophetic pronouncement, as we read in Luke 1941-44. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou had known, even though at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thy eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even to the ground, and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. The God thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. As prophesied by Jesus Christ, this magnificent temple was burnt down by the Romans 70 years after the ascension to heaven of Christ the Lord. Six, it was at this point that the Lord established his church and sealed it with authority as we read above. And I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever that thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. 
And whatsoever shall thou lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Hence, God establishes church on earth, over which you and I, as believer Christians, are joint custodians and stewards as managers of the Lord's resources. Seven, one of these functions which the Lord commissioned us to execute is also revealed in John 21 17. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, that thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Jesus knew that his children would need help. And hence commissioned his church to be equipped to take good care of his flock. Unlike in the old church, in the Old Testament, the Pharisees and the religious leaders fed fat on the sweat of pure and want of widows. In Acts, our Lord confirmed that he established the church and has commissioned all of us to manage it. As we read in chapter 20, verses 28 to 31, be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit had made you overseers to shepherd, that is to feed, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among you, your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be on the alert. Remembering that night and day, for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. And lastly, King Solomon, who we all agree to be the wisest king on earth, through the grace of our Lord, also laid emphasis on the need to honor God with our treasure. I also enumerated all the benefits to be derived by giving to God, as we read in the book of Proverbs, Chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thy increase, so shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burn out with new wine. It often surprises me when some skeptics still doubt God's word, that when they part with part of their possession, how they will get more back in return. Some even felt that since they are not any much, God will not require them to give back from the little amount. And each time they cost themselves. They don't have, they say, they don't have. They are poor. And when and how will such people ever have or be rich or have sufficient to give? Don't let us continue to cost ourselves. The Bible said in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you make with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Who and what do we learn about the great characters in the Bible who gave generously to God? One, Abel, in Genesis 4.4. 4. And Abel, he also brought up the first strings of his flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel yes. and to his offering. Mm -hmm. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Mm -hmm. Two, Abraham, in Genesis 22.15-19. And the angel of the Lord called on Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the sea, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. 
and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earthly bless, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Amen. King Solomon in 1 King 3 to 5. And Solomon loved God, walking in the status of David his father. Only his sacrifice and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gideon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that wall in Gideon. The Lord appeared to Solomon because God was so impressed with the sacrifice of Solomon. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. In Mark 12, 42, And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which makes a father. And Jesus called unto him his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow had cast more in than all they which had cast into the treasure. For all they cast in of their abundance, but she of her one did cast in all that she had, even all her living. She didn't have one dime left. She cast everything. Now, so we see what the Holy Bible has told us about the lives of many people who had obeyed the laws of giving. Givers would never lack. Amen. Amen. Proverbs. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 25, 21 to 22 says, If thy enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be lack, Thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou hast heaped coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Amen. The same Proverbs 28 27. He that gives unto the poor shall not lack. But he that hides his eye shall have many a cause. And in Mark 8 36 to 38. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. Whatsoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adorous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh into the glory of his Father Amen. with the holy angels. In 2 Corinthians 9, 69, But this I say, He which sweats sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sweat bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Amen. Every man, according as he propose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, mm -hmm. of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Yes. And, amen. amen. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye also having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He has despised abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which cause through us thanksgiving to God. The biblical view of possession demands using them for honoring God. And this is accomplished by trusting God, by giving the first and best to God, by being fair, by giving generously, and by expressing gratitude for all He gives. Amen. The result of such faithfulness to honor Him is prosperity yes. and satisfaction. Two, honoring the Lord goes much further than just attending church and stating that we are believers. Our heart is where our pocketbook and time is. Three, we can see from Jesus' own words here that if we plan to prosper, we must give both of ourselves and our possessions. In Malachi 3, 10, he tells us, bring your the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, yes. said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the window of heaven, and pour you out a blessing. 
that there shall be not room enough to receive it. Amen. Amen. The whole subject of giving money can be confusing. We ask ourselves this pertinent question, how much should I give to the Lord? How much should I give to the church? To what cost should I contribute? What is the proper attitude I should have towards giving? The Holy Bible did explain in detail. And very details demonstrating how important our acts of financial stewardship are to God. By giving back a portion of what we have received from Him, we are acknowledging His ownership of it all. Amen. 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 We are acting as channels through which He supplies other needs. We are proving our faithfulness in large and small matters. Most of all, God wants us to give to Him because this act of worship is like a sweet fragrance aroma to Him. When our generosity goes deep, the sacrifice delights Him. Today is the last Sunday of the year 2012 where we are taking stock of how far we have performed during the past 12 months. What are our resolutions for the coming year? Are you still going to be sitting on the fence, thinking whether to be a full member of the Commonwealth of Christ? It is not God's people church you are joining, but the Commonwealth of Christ of which God's people church is also a family. Amen. Or you are going to put Satan to shame and take the plunge today to follow Jesus. Amen. What are you hoping to achieve in the coming year? And where do you want to be placed within the ministry in the coming year? As an active member or as a dead wood bench woman Christian, Amen. with nothing to give the church except your presence for two hours on Sundays only. Amen. Pray to God today to help you in making the right decision to follow Jesus so that your life may not be like the rich young man whom Jesus advised to go and sell all his possessions and follow him. Jesus loved him. As well as he loved you. And he's asking you today to cast aside all the worldly materials. Okay. Which have been creating a barrier between him and you. To enable you to follow him in the new year and worship yeah. him in the spirit and in truth. Yes. For verily I say unto you. It will be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of Please, let us come to welcome in the new year 2013, praising and worshiping God at the church night virgin starting at 9.30 on the New Year's Eve. We need that special prayer Amen. to enable us to face the new year with faith, with hope, with courage, with optimism, and believe that we shall overcome. I wish you all a prosperous new year. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen.